Hey out there. Yeah, I'm uh, here in uh, heavily overpopulated Northern California, Butte County. And uh, I'm going to pan around from where I am. And, uh, you know, maybe it's overpopulated with cows, but that's about it. Do a 360 for you. On the side of a hill, so the, the camera is kind of angling at some points here. It's a, uh, there's a walking trail here, and people like to bring their dogs. And now we're back at the cows, 360 degrees. Now, something else I wanted to show you. There's a lot of clouds in the sky today, and I have a hunch that these things, believe it or not, as natural as they look, or not. Uh, these guys doing these camp trail spraying, the geoengineering, weather modification, they've gotten very, very good at, um, at disguising them. And uh, there's a sun right there. And then right over here, I think that you can see the remnants above the haze of what I'm talking about there. Right there, there's a trail. So if you look carefully, you'll see what I'm talking about. I find it disgusting, reprehensible. Say, I wanted to talk a little today about um, about attaining happiness and what's involved and the connection with the uh, conscience. This is January 6th, Monday, uh, 2014. And, you know, happiness for a lot of people, I think, is misunderstood. Um, you know, a lot of people may think it means uh, walking around giggly and, and smiling and cheerful all the time. And that would indicate that they're happy. But depending on what's making you giddy and cheerful and smiling all the time uh, is important to understand. Because we can be deceived in what we believe is bringing us happiness. It's like Jesus said, make sure the light within you is not darkness. So when people are smiling and laughing and cheerful and giddy, on the outside they appear happy. So their light is shining and they're attractive, they're magnetic. But if what's making them happy is knowing that they have a fat portfolio and that they have worldly wealth, and security, then it's a false form of happiness. It's not real. But as we know, the mind is very powerful. Even science has proven, for example, the placebo effect, mind over matter, that it's a very real thing. It's invisible, but thoughts are things, and as you believe, so it shall be. It brings me to another passage in Scripture where uh, it's spoken that they, meaning the believers, the followers of truth, will drink deadly poison and it will in no way hurt them. I find that fascinating, which reminds me of my smoking habit. And I don't smoke to get sick, I smoke because I enjoy it. And as goofy as it may sound to some people, when I say I, I love cigarettes and I thank God for tobacco, you know, that's a double-edged sword because the reality is that the science shows that it can be harmful and often is if you do it in excess. Though many people get lung cancer and emphysema that never smoked. So 
is debatable and often smokers outlive non-smokers. So, you know, it's hard to say that there's a hard and fast rule here, but self-control of course is important because if you do anything in excess, especially something like a drug, and of course nicotine is a drug, then you're going to get sick. That's the science behind that, basically. And then again, you know, the mind can offset that, and if you eat good, healthy food, uh, that can offset it too. Um, now back to being happy. If you don't know it, but your happiness is going against your conscience, you will find out. You will hit a wall, and that wall is reality. And the reality is that you cannot ignore your conscience. You cannot sever your true happiness from your conscience. Um, it, it makes me think of an analogy I had for uh, valuing your conscience and how it's so important to value your conscience. And that is this idea of our body being able to feel pain. A lot of people will say, well, Pain is a bad thing, and we don't like it. But let me ask you, if you hold your hand over a hot stove, it may feel good if your hand is cold for a while, if you don't hold it too close. But after a while, it's gonna get uncomfortable. And if you hold it too close for too long, it's gonna get hot, it's gonna burn you. And if you couldn't feel pain, you would cremate your hand. And it's the same way with the conscience. Um, we should be grateful that we can feel pain. We should be very grateful that we have a conscience and that we have the ability to discern right from wrong and that when we know things aren't right, we stand up and say things aren't right and it doesn't feel good. And even if it doesn't affect me personally, if it affects a fellow human being, it's going to weigh on my conscience. And this is where we have to be very, very circumspect and really try to understand the gravity of the situation. Because after all, if to me, we'll live our lives in vain if we don't have proper values and attain true happiness through having those proper values. And the proper values are things that are eternal, things that can't be taken away from you. And your conscience, like your integrity, your soul, your spirit, your mind, your heart, are those kind of things. They're the invisible, but very real and very powerful. So we should all be grateful that we have a conscience. And when you pay close attention to your conscience and you realize, you know, there's something bugging me in this world, this system that we have. And what it comes down to is it's a world built on fraud. We have an economic system built on fraud. Everything comes around to money. It always comes around to money. Like Jesus said, the money is a competing master for our attention, for our affection, for reverence. And reverence and fear have a core relation. If you look up the words in the dictionary, you'll understand what I'm saying is true. Now there's a kind of fear where you're afraid of something and it triggers that fight or flight response. And that is a, a negative kind of fear. But the kind of fear that God wants us to have is a reverence, a deep and profound respect for the one that gave us life the one that created all things, that put the universe in motion, that rightfully owns all that is contained in the universe. And that includes us. That includes our hearts, our minds, our spirits, our souls, and our bodies. So if we want to attain true happiness, we have to seek to please our creator, the rightful owner of happiness, the one that doles it out to us. And when we engage in things in our lives, whether it be thoughts or words or deeds that don't please God, then we will, we will feel pain. It will afflict our conscience. And 
a lot will turn away from it and say, that feels bad, I don't want that pain. So I am going to shun my conscience. And this is what we have to understand has happened at the very highest levels of power in this world. These are the top money lovers. These are, this is where the greatest evil resides with the love of money. These money printers that literally own the copyright to the money. This is definitely a form of magic, of sorcery. And these people wield great power to destroy humanity. And people have to understand what I'm saying here. Um, we've gotten so far away from the supply and demand principles, whereby if much is produced and little is consumed, your burden, that is your cost of living, will decline. So life gets easier and easier and easier as it as we produce more and more and more and consume less and less and less. And that's exactly the situation we have here on Earth, where we've had a rising tide of prosperity across the planet, but it's only been allowed to lift a few ships. And many are left out to sink and be submerged, and the, and the occupants of those ships are allowed to drown. And this is what these people are after. They're after a grand mass population reduction to the tune of some 85%. If you do the math and you look at the Georgia Guidestones, they want to get the population down to 500 million from 7 point something billion now. Um, that means uh, that's roughly 15% uh, remaining of the total. So uh, that's dramatic and we all need to face that reality and all these people that are out there that don't know this or you know they just choose not to look at it, they can do that but they can do it to their own peril and they need to understand if they're overly vested, trusting in this system, they're going to be sorely let down because the people you're trusting in have cast their conscience aside. They've said, I've got no use for this thing. I don't value it. In fact, I hate it because it's a downer and it inflicts pain on my conscience. And it makes me unhappy to have a conscience. Can you see how outrageous it is? So if you're hitched to these people's wagon, you understand where it's headed. It's headed for the fire, the proverbial fires of hell as a metaphor to holding your hand over the stove and if you didn't have a sense of pain you'd cremate your hand the same thing is happening to their conscience and if you go where these people are going that's where you're headed you're headed to no man's land you're headed to the the levels of hell that Dante explained in, in Dante's Inferno you know and there's special places, dark recesses of hell reserved for the kingpins, of course. But these are the kind of people that say, you know what, I'd rather, I'd rather rule in hell than be subservient in heaven. And myself and so many others are happy with very little. I just want to enjoy my life, okay? I want to be able to be free. And in order for me to be able to be free, which is very important to me, to be liberated because this is in it, my happiness is involved in being free to not feel like I'm being forced or coerced somebody's whipping me metaphorically and making me afraid financially insecure uh, so in order to, to to find that I need to be free from this money-based reality but I'm stuck in it like a devil soup we're stuck in it and we have to contend with it you understand, I might have the wherewithal, be, by the grace of God, to go out and to make a lot of money and to, for myself, be financially secure. But if I can see the end from the beginning, which I can because God allows us to see the end from the beginning, I realize that I am not going to be happy in a situation where uh, austerity, poverty is exploding all around me and people are literally dying out in the cold because
because of it. People are killing themselves because of it. It's causing divorce. Families are in distress. Okay, it is hurting people in a very real, very tangible, very measurable, very literal way. It is committing genocide. That's what these people are doing. They're haters of humanity. They're haters of good. They want to destroy us.